In this video, I'm going to be going over GitHub Spark as well as some of the other announcements out of GitHub today, including their announcements on GitHub Copilot. So the GitHub Spark, basically what it is, it's an AI tool that allows you to create these small personalized apps. They're referring to these little applications as Sparks, essentially little things that you can build with natural language. Now, the thing that's great with these applications though, is you can make them fully functional as well as deployable and shareable. You can build these on desktop, you can build them on mobile. The nice thing with their implementation is you also have the ability to do things like provision a database if you'd like. So you can handle all of the different backend setup and deployment process all within the platform that they're building out. The nice thing with this implementation is it's similar to something like Bolt.new, GPT Engineer, or Replit Agent, where you'll be able to also tie in and have some aspects where you can host and share the backend application as well, and not just build out these front end web apps. Like we'll be able to build things with increasingly more complexity or handle things that would otherwise need to be done on the backend. Now, in terms of some of the other announcements that a lot of people are excited about, is now GitHub Copilot has the ability to access Anthropic's Cloud 3.5 model, Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro model, as well as OpenAI's O1 Preview model. Before this announcement, you were able to access models from GPT 3.5 Turbo through to GPT 4.0, as well as the GPT 4.0 mini model. But now they've really come to the forefront and met developers where they are. Personally, I find that Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is the model that I use for most of the tasks day to day. With that said, there definitely are some really great use cases for both Gemini as well as O1 Preview. And what's nice now is you have the ability similar to Cursor where you can just go and select the particular model that is right for the task. Now, one of the big announcements with this is they announced that they do have multi-file edit coming over the coming days that's gonna be rolling out. And this is, in my opinion, a huge feature. This is something that made me personally gravitate towards something like Cursor because Cursor has a feature called Composer. And what Composer allows you to do is you can create new files within the Composer as well as edit existing files. And it really makes it a lot more powerful for a lot of different use cases. Like just to give you an example, say you're maybe building out a backend and you want to quickly spin up a front end. You can feed it the context of the backend and it will be able to have the context of what it needs to know to build out whatever you need on the front end. So little things like that are definitely really helpful. Now, the one thing that I think GitHub will do well is obviously version control. And that is one thing that can be challenging with some of these code generation tools. If you're not careful, you can definitely break aspects of your application, especially if you're feeding it in with a ton of context and giving it the ability to edit multiple parts of your application. You definitely have to be mindful of that, but given their sort of core offering of GitHub and Git and versioning and all of that, I'd imagine that they will do a pretty good job at figuring out this piece. Another thing that's great is the Gemini 1.5 Pro model. This model isn't one that is often as talked about as something like Anthropic or the OpenAI models, but nonetheless, it is a very impressive model. And one of the big reasons for that is it has up to a 2 million token context that you can pass in. But you can imagine a huge code base, like absolutely giant in comparison to some of these other models, like I believe GPT-4.0, for instance, is 128K in terms of context that you can pass in. This allows you to pass in a ton of context, which can be useful for the model just to really understand the nuances of what's going on within your code. And then there's also the O1 Preview and the O1 Mini model. So I've found this model to be really good at problems that I haven't been able to solve with other models. So now while O1 and O1 Preview doesn't have as large of a context window as something like the Gemini series of models, it does exceptionally well on very complicated problems. What I've found with O1 as well as O1 Preview is it can do really well on problems that I wasn't otherwise able to solve with some other models. It's definitely nice just to have a plethora of different models that you can access within GitHub Copilot. Now, I think if they are able to offer GitHub Spark under this umbrella of the $10 a month tier, as well as giving whether it's a generous number of requests, something like cursor, whether it's the 500 requests per month for the $10 or what have you, even something along those lines, I think that I personally would maybe consider switching just given that it is about half the cost. Now, just some final thoughts on this announcement. I think it's great to have the ability to switch between all of these different models. I think if they can offer GitHub Spark under this $10 a month tier that they have for GitHub Copilot, 
it will be a very competitive offering. Now, what we have seen is with a lot of these types of tools is they generally gravitate towards the $20 a month tier. And maybe they have to do something like that to make this make sense. But I think that they do have the potential to really garner a lot of attention from developers if they come out of the gate and include this within a GitHub Copilot subscription. Now, another thing with this that I don't have information on, unfortunately, are the limitations that they're going to have, whether it's on Spark or within GitHub Copilot itself for models like Sonnet 3.5, as well as O1. It's really great on a number of different fronts to have another competitor, whether it's GitHub Copilot, we have Super Maven, we have tools like Continue or Source Graph. There's just a bunch of different options in terms of different offerings that we can access now. Another minor one, but I think a lot of people will like is you can also add mention perplexity within GitHub Copilot now. So one thing to know with this is GitHub Copilot is coming to Xcode. So if you are an Apple developer and it building apps for iPad or iPhone or what have you, that is an option that you do have available to you today to start to use GitHub Copilot. Let me know in the comments below what you think of GitHub Copilot's new release and how it compares to some of these other platforms in the AI coding space. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.